Hi food day lovers, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to show some of my favorite undyed goat cheek and face brushes. I will do a separate video of my dyed um, goat brushes in the near future, but I figured I would break it down this way just to kind of narrow them down a bit more because of course I do have some favorite dyed goat brushes as well, but I will definitely save that for another video. Um, so I just wanted to do some quick comparisons and differences between some of my favorite undyed goat brushes. And I wanted to make sure to feature brushes that are still available on the market today. I didn't want to include any brushes that are no longer available. Just for anybody who may be new to Fude or somebody who's doing research on goat brushes that you know maybe you're interested in purchasing. So I hope you guys find this helpful and we'll get right into it. So the first brush here is the Hakahodo J531 and it is 45 millimeters in length. Mine is older inventory, so it says B531, but it's now labeled as the J. 531 and Hakuhoto no longer labels the type of goat that they use but in my opinion it definitely feels like Saikoho at least the brush that I have very soft and this is one of my all-time favorite brushes for bronzing I love this brush with bronzer it just picks up and disperses the perfect amount. And keep in mind, um, this has been stored in a brush guard. So normally it fluffs out quite a bit more. And just so you guys know too, the brush guards I use, they're these lace brush guards that you can get off AliExpress. And I actually love these brush guards because they don't, they don't hold the brush so tightly the way that those other brush guards do that you see on the market. So I really, really like these brush guards. So it helps keep the shape. It's not like too compact. Like if I was to leave them in those net brush guards, um, as long as I do, sometimes it just makes them too compact. So I figured I would mention that those are really great and they're very affordable. Again, you can get them on AliExpress, so I figured they were worth mentioning. But I love this brush so much that I actually have another one. <laughs> I've got the S531 in the Vermilion handle. So they're the exact same brush, but the Vermilion handles are absolutely stunning. The only issue with the Vermilion handles is you have to be very careful not to drop the brush because if you drop it, they're really prone to chipping at the bottom. Even with storage, if you store them in a cup and they hit the bottom too hard, they can really chip. So I'm very careful with mine, which is kind of a shame. I've heard other people say this as well, but it almost makes you like not even want to use it because I'm always so scared of breaking the handle. <laughs> I know that sounds so ridiculous. These brushes are meant to use, but I find myself reaching for my regular handle more just because of that reason. But, you know, this just goes to show, and this has also been in a brush guard, but you can see the shapes on mine are slightly different. It seems like this one is a little wider. And granted, I have used this one more so that could also be another factor, but even the hairs look a little bit different. They look a little bit more shiny on my vermilion handle, but again, it could just be because I've used this one more, and that's honestly probably why. But it just goes to show with hand bundled brushes how there's always going to be slight differences, even when you own the same exact brush, and that's what makes them so unique. And is it excessive to have one in each handle? Absolutely. I got the Vermilion handle after the black handle. I actually got it from CD Japan before they stopped selling Hakuhodo. And um, I don't regret it just because I love this brush so much that one day if it does take a little bit too much of a beating, at least I have a backup. 
Not that my brushes ever take that much of a beating because when you own so many, you kind of find yourself rotating so much that they really don't get used and abused, so to speak. But yeah, so anyway, this one was definitely worth mentioning. I love the J531 with a passion. And I'm really excited to pick up the G531. I really wanna get it. It's the new one in the Goat Squirrel Blend. And with how much I adore the J531, I am really looking forward to owning it in the Goat Squirrel Blend because that blend is amazing. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to picking that up in the near future. So the next one we have here is the Hakuhodo J501. And this is 44 millimeters in length. And it's actually a mix of goat and synthetic blend. Now what's crazy about it is when you look up close, you would truly never even know that this is mixed with synthetic. I do know Hakuhodo mixes the smallest amount of synthetic in these brushes if they mention it's with synthetic so you can really hardly notice like if i was to put it next to the j531 which is all goat you truly can't even see and in my opinion they apply the same it's a definitely a small 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 percentage of synthetic so it's really really nice and again it's 44 millimeters in length I love this brush for bronzer as well. Really, really nice brush. It's got nice movement on the skin. Really lovely. Just as soft as the all goat version. So honestly, there's really not much of a difference. So don't be scared if you see Hakuhodo brushes that are blended with synthetic. It is so minor that you truly don't even feel the difference. And just for size comparisons, I wanted to compare it to the Tom Ford 05 bronzer brush, just so you can see the size of the J501. What I love about the 501 is it's not as large as the Tom Ford, but it takes on very similar shape. So if you're someone like me who has small face features, the J501 is a wonderful option if you missed out on the Tom Ford bronzer brush. And even next to the Tom Ford, you can seriously just hardly see the synthetic. Tom Ford is a little bit softer. However, it is older goat hair, so that could be why as well. But um, yeah, it's just a really lovely option if you missed out on the Tom Ford brush and you want something just a little bit smaller. It's that perfect size. And as always, that lovely diamond taper. I also have this in the Goat Squirrel Mix Blend. I just love this shape and size. And if you like denser brushes, this is great. And of course you could use it with powder as well, but I just love it with bronzer. And then the next one I have here is the Hakuhodo J5543. And this is 31 millimeters in length. And I really wanted to mention this one because it holds such a special place in my heart. This was actually my first, one of my first Hakuhodo brushes. I had purchased some couple eye brushes. I think it was the 5523 and the 146. And this is the first cheek brush I ever got from Hakuhodo. And this one is all goat. So there's no synthetic mixed in. And I will say, I have not used this in a little while, but um, it's just such a nice brush. I remember when I first got it, it was great with bronzer. If you still like to contour, wonderful for that. But again, having smaller features, I really love these smaller brushes for bronzing. Like I'll go in with a brush of this size first with my bronzer, and then I'll go in with a brush like this or this afterwards with bronzer just to kind of blend it in all together. But I just love having those different sizes because I don't know, I like that targeted bronzer first and then I'll go in with a bigger brush after that. So yeah, this is a great one. Especially if you missed out on the Wayne Goss 12 brush, which I actually should bring that out real quick. 
Here's the Wayne Goss 12. So the Wayne Goss 12 is one millimeter smaller, shorter in length, but they are so close. I mean, one millimeter in the grand scheme of things is really not a big deal. Softness wise, let's see. Wayne Goss, Hakahoto. Yeah, they're very similar. And of course the face is really what tells it because your hands definitely have a different feeling than your face but even on my face they feel nearly identical so lovely option if you missed out on the Wayne Goss 12 you're looking for this shape and length beautiful brush and especially where I heard Hakuhodo yet again is raising their prices Toshia sent out a newsletter I believe it is coming in October which is crazy because I feel like we just had a Hakuhodo price increase, like two of them not long ago. So um, I always like to do research when I'm about to buy brushes before price increase. So hopefully this helps you guys out if you're looking at any of the Hakuhodo goat brushes. And the next one we have here is the Takeda 23 EXS. And this is in their EXS bristles. And this is 50 millimeters in length. So this is the biggest brush in this whole video. And I love this brush with powder. It's just so beautiful and fluffy and soft. Takeda's EXS bristles are just out of this world amazing. Just look at that movement. It has just enough density. It's not too dense and that's why Typically, I don't prefer goat brushes um, with my powder application because as I've gotten older, I don't really want a lot of powder packed on. So the EXS bristles in this 50 millimeter length applies powder beautifully, never applies too much. Um, it picks up the powder beautifully too. It never just kind of stamps it all in one place. It really just blends it beautifully into the skin. So this is probably my all-time favorite. Yeah, I'd say this is my all-time favorite goat brush with powder products for applying my loose powder. It's just gorgeous. And Takeda is running out of their EXS bristles. So this 50 millimeter length is gonna be probably discontinued at some point. I'm actually surprised it's not yet. I still see it on Tashia's website. So if you're thinking of trying EXS and you wanna go for a big powder brush, the 23 EXS is stunning. And just look how fine these bristles are. They're almost translucent at the, at the tips. Almost similar to like Saipi Coho Goat. Like they're just phenomenal. Beautiful diamond taper. Oh, I love that one. And then the next one I have up here is the 23, the Takeda 23 OVD 37 EXS. And this is 37 millimeters in length. And this is a dense brush. So having these EXS bristles in this dense form is out of this world, amazing. So I love this brush, again with bronzer. <laughs> pattern here I love bronzer brushes but you could also use it of course with blush bronzer blush I'm sure you could even use this with cream products as well but for some reason these EXS bristles are so precious to me that I don't like using them with creams or liquids I have other brushes I would prefer like my refer brushes I would be comfortable obviously using with creams or liquids Sony G Fusion series. So for me, this brush is just one of my favorites with bronzer, just gorgeous. And if you like compare it to Hakuhodo's Goat, you can see the difference in the hairs. Now Hakuhodo is still very fine as well, but just look at the shine at the tips of these EXS bristles. Tiny little baby hairs at the very top. They're really unique. And I'm very fortunate I was able to pick them up when I did before Takeda's price increase and of course before they go away. So if you're 
thinking of getting some EXS bristles, I would definitely think about it soon before they're gone because they're just so beautiful. And it's in that 23 millimeter length for the ferrule. 23 millimeter size for the ferrule. So it's the same as the 23 EXS. The ferrule sizes are the same, just different lengths. And then the next Takeda brush I have here is the 19 EXS. And this is 43 millimeters in length. And I love, what do you know, this brush with bronzer. What I love about it is its shape. So it has that beautiful squared off shape I love, but it's almost flat at the top. So just the way it applies my bronzer, it doesn't apply it in a direct manner. So this would be like a brush I would go in after a shape like the J5543. Or you could use this all on its own, honestly. If you like a more natural bronze effect, you'd love this one. And it can definitely build up bronzer quite nicely because it's goat. So goat really does pick up product very easily. But there's just something about the EXS bristles to where they never apply too much. They're just stunning. This is almost like a smaller 23 EXS. They're literally almost the same. However, the 23 has that diamond, whereas the 19, it's almost a little bit more flat at the top. Now keep in mind, that might be because of the way mine was bundled. These are all hand bundled one by one. So you could get the 19 and it could have the diamond taper like my 23. So you just never know, but love it. And if you're not a fan of large powder brushes like the 23, then the 19 would be perfect for you because you could use it with loose powder, bronzer. It's a very versatile size and that's what I love about it. And it's really similar in length to the J501. Yeah, the J501 44 millimeters. Say they're about the same, actually. Honestly. Yeah, I would actually say maybe they're both. Because I actually had to measure my 19 with my calipers. So the 19 actually might even be. No, nah, they look about the same. The link looks about the same. But they definitely have different shapes and different densities. So the J501 is more compact. And this one, the 19 EXS, just has more movement. So even though the hair length is pretty much the same, you can see the way they move on the skin. The J501 is more direct, where the 19 EXS is going to be a little bit more airy. But yet it still has such perfect density. It's that perfect in-between. I love this one. Just beautiful. And then the next Takeda brush I have here is the 15 OVD 38 EXS. And this is 38 millimeters in length, again in Takeda's EXS hairs. And this is a custom I created with Takeda. And I wanted to create something similar to the Suku cheek brush, just like the shape, size, density. And what I really love about this brush is its density. It's not too dense, similar to the 19 EXS, the way it has great movement on the skin. And it never applies too much blush. When I used this with blush, I was in love. It's truly one of my all time favorite blush brushes. And this one I did get with my custom engraving. These ones I had got before, they were some of my first Takeda brushes and it was before I started engraving. And I just love engraving them because it really personalizes them, customizes them. And when I'm filming videos or uploading on Instagram, it's easy for me to refer to their codes when it's on the handle. And basically, so this means 15 size feral, oval, dense, 38 millimeters EXS. I'm pretty sure that's what the OV means, oval. I think that's the shape yeah because it's more oval 
So yeah, that's a lovely one. And then the next one I have here is the Sonia G Hinoki brush number one. And this is 37 millimeters in length. And these brushes are just so stunning from Sonia. To be quite honest, I am shocked these are still available on Beautylish. These were limited edition, feels like forever ago. And I'm shocked to see them still available because these hairs are so extremely soft. Like look how shiny they are, just stunning. And what I love about this one um, is the size and the density. It's not too big. Like this is gonna be a brush I'm gonna feature in another video, but if I'm sure you've all seen this, the Niji Pro. I'm sure you've seen a million comparisons between the two, but the Niji Pro was definitely bigger where the Hinoki is just the perfect size because I have smaller features. So, and this is way more dense too, the Niji Pro, but it's great for those hard to pick up products, like those big gelée products, really nice brush for that. But the Hinoki is just so soft and just, the perfect size, perfect density. I love the way this applies my bronzer. And just to put the hairs up next to the Hakuhodo, and then I'll even grab an EXS brush as well, just so you can see the different hairs. I know Sonia had mentioned she used a different manufacturer for these, somebody that we all know, she couldn't say who, which is understandable, but it really does show because look at these bristles. They're like translucent, very similar to like the EXS bristles. But these are even more translucent towards the middle of the brush head. Like it's just so, so beautiful. So I don't know when the Hinoki set's gonna sell out. Again, I'm shocked it's not sold out yet, but um, I do highly recommend it. And I like the brush number two as well. I don't use it as much as my Hinoki, but yeah, I do know some people, I think they mentioned their Hinoki brush shed. Mine did a couple hairs when I first got it, which is completely normal. Um, even just like right now, I've had it in a brush guard too, so that could be why, but it's nothing crazy. It's not to the point where I'd say it's defective or don't recommend it. It's a beautiful brush and the softness and the quality just speaks for itself. It's one of those brushes that you have to have in person and use it to really experience the true luxury. Sonia really did a beautiful job with the Hinoki set. And then last but not least, I got my Sonia G Fan Pro. This is 20 millimeters in length. I have definitely shown this on my channel many times, but I adore this brush with highlight. And if you like um, cream or liquid highlight, you could use it with cream or liquid highlight since it is undyed goat. So it's only recommended to use cream or liquids with undyed goat hair, not to use with dyed goat hair. So that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, I do love this. And I prefer a more targeted highlight. I like to really place it where I want it and then blend it out versus having it go places I don't want, especially since I have smaller features. So I really love the Fan Pro. And it's sad to see Sonia's brushes like selling out and not knowing what's gonna return, when it's gonna return. So it's just really sad. It's almost like you feel like when there's a brush you're thinking of getting, you have to just jump or else you don't know if it'll be gone <laughs> it's just crazy which is definitely no no way anybody wants to be you want to be able to think through your purchases and not be impulsive so but she always tends to bring things back one way or another so I'm sure she, I'm sure she'll surprise us so anyway I hope this video was helpful if you guys have any questions leave them down below what are your favorite undyed goat brushes cheek and face brushes that you enjoy definitely would love to hear it in the comments below um, subscribe if you guys haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.